So, um, let me just check to make sure we're recording. I apologize for the sound quality. But some of you may have run across a used MI424WR Revision I Frontier router. It's got a coax connector on it. It seems too difficult to put third party firmware on it. Um, maybe you got a loaded via JTAG or something. So, you want to set this up as an AP. Now, I'm not going to go over what you know everything about setting up stuff as an AP. I'm just going to cover the essentials for people that are already into, you know, could already set up a DD Work router as an AP or maybe another brand and have gotten stumped on this one and can't figure it out. Now, even though it says router stop status, check your broadband connection disconnected. Okay, uh, it's not. This is a, this is an invalid error, and uh, I assume you know how to set up the wireless settings on here the restrictions that your SSID can't have spaces or I think it can't have special characters either. Um, the password has to have a number and letters in it um, which is more stipulations than just the minimum definition of uh, Wi-Fi networking. So, so you're gonna have to make sure you set that correctly. Uh, so you go into your the very first thing you want to set is firewall settings before you start changing these other settings. Say yes. And you change it to minimum and you go to remote administration. So minimum and apply. And then remote administration, use primary telnet, use primary HTTP port, and then hit apply. Oh, and also change this allow incoming WAN, UDP tracer route queries. Because basically, when you're on your network and you're not connected via the Wi Fi or the Ethernet ports on this, box and you're connected to your network via maybe your other maybe your main Wi-Fi router um, you'll want to be able to access this and, and just just leave this stuff like I've made it here and apply it okay so now that the fun part you go to network and at minimal this is how it has to be configured I've got examples of clients that have already connected now it'll say static because I think what it's doing is a probe and it didn't assign these IP addresses to these clients but it can see them so it's claiming that they're static. They're actually dynamic, but they're dynamic from the main DHCP server and not this box. So then you go to network connections and this is where the real magic is. You click on, this will say basic, click on basic and it'll say, or it'll say advanced and then it'll say basic. So you want it arranged like this. I've renamed network bridge, I think, because this is what it is, a network bridge. So I've renamed it, but look for that icon click on here or click on here. I'm going to show you the screens and then you can just make mental notes, compare it with your screens, pause the video and make sure your stuff looks the same as this. Go to settings. Again, just make sure yours looks the same as this. Okay, just pause the video. Hit apply. Hit your back arrow on your browser and hit your back arrow again go into your broadband configure it so it looks like this so it looks like this okay you don't have to disable the uh, coax link just leave it alone I mean, you can play with this stuff, but if you change anything on here, make sure you make a backup of the settings first. So if you hose your box and you reset it, you can go right back to where you were, where it works. So apply those settings. I'm going to go back on my browser again. Go back one more time. And look at the wireless access point settings. Notice it says DMZ. This is pretty simple to set up. Pretty much you're just changing this to DMZ. Going back again, you go to your Ethernet coax, which I don't know why they call it Ethernet coax, but whatever. As far as I can figure, these are your LAN ports. And again, set it for DMZ. 
Again, you can play with these settings, like instead of obtain a, a DNS server address automatically, I don't know, try to maybe set it statically and set it to be the same, um, you know, as you're given an IP that's on your on your network. I don't know what the point of that is, but maybe you just want to get rid of this error message up here. But it definitely works in this setup. Plugged in both computers to the Ethernet ports and wireless clients, and they can both talk to transparently to other computers on the network that are plugged in through the WAN port. So when you bring in your Ethernet connection to the to this box, you definitely want to plug it into the WAN port, your upstream Ethernet, but it seems to mirror everything onto the Ethernet ports just fine. These will show connected if you plug in a client. Then apply your settings. I'm going to go back again. You can just pause the video. Um, so I'm going to go back a couple times. And this is just disabled. And you don't have to change anything on here. So that's it. That's all you have to do. Then if you go into advanced and you look in, say, date and time, date and time will work. This might be off here because it doesn't seem to know what the correct daylight savings time is, but you can set that up. Uh, and then you have got to update every 24 hours and you can see it's successfully synced. If you were to just turn off the DHCP server on here only and plug in your existing network into one of the Ethernet ports uh, and configure your Wi-Fi, um, this would not work because it would only look at the broadband WAN port for, um, for um, as far as I can tell, for uh, its uh, internet connectivity to the NTP server. So that's it. Now you just save your settings. Remember, hit apply every time, and that's it. It works as an AP.